Welcome to part two of the Hair Transplant Roadshow focus on hair multiplication. Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Haber, hair loss expert and hair transplant surgeon from Cleveland, Ohio. Join me and the Hair Transplant Roadshow as I travel the globe seeking answers to important surgical and non-surgical hair loss questions from the true experts in the field. Well, this is part two of my interview with Ken Wyshenek, President and Chief Medical Officer of Bosley and a recognized expert on hair multiplication. In part one, we covered the past. In part two, we will cover the present. I support this program by selecting like, subscribe, and requesting notifications when our next episode is available. So as we talked about, you know, approximately 10 years ago, Adirans decided to end the research into hair multiplication that left primarily just one UK-based company actively investigated the process and the, and the topic. Recently, uh, there's been a new initiative looking again at hair multiplication, and this segment is about the present. So Ken, what changed? What's happening in labs around the world to bring this technology to fruition now? So, you know, the, 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 the course of development was that a number of labs, while we paused, continued to, to work on the clinical utility of a dermal cell only constructs and a number of uh, companies worked on that and and it was uh, a good uh, theory because you can make grow so many dermal fibroblasts that it's an attractive model and you can use them for other uses too i mean wound healing for example i mean there are, there are a lot of uses you could uh, think of where we're creating a dermal fibroblast is helpful so a few people entered uh, different uh, entities that entered clinical research and what we saw was that uh, a good number and still see a good number of excellent laboratories can grow mouse hair really well transitioning that technology into growing human hairs has been a long-standing challenge and so when we look at the, the literature when we listen to uh, really respected scientists speak it's often important to pause and say what type of, of hairs are we talking about are we talking about mouse hairs or human hairs and in some experiments some systems you actually have these hybrid hairs that are made up of some uh, mouse component and some human component and i i think that is where the field has been uh, for the past few years i said uh a, a few entities have been running clinical trials trying to generate successful hair growth in patients with hair loss and and that's uh, seen very limited success so nothing has come uh, to the market from those those attempts we uh, at Adirans paused our program and now we're we're restarting it with this partnership we formed with uh, stem cell an induced pluripotent stem cell uh, biotechnology company in san diego and what's different about that approach how is the so before you didn't use stem cells and now you're bringing stem cells into the mix or were there stem cells involved so so uh, both and i know that doesn't help you much with clarity but uh, we we took entire human uh, skin sample so it had stem cells, it had mesenchymal stem cells, it had uh, epidermal stem cells, and it had uh, non-stem cells. And we would, we would take cells and help direct them toward dermal and epidermal um, uh, characteristics through the, the ingredients we put in our culture media. This uh, approach of using strictly stem cells, something that uh, is being done at Stemson, is to take adult cells and use the technology uh, that won the Nobel Prize a few years ago. Uh, uh, Dr. Yamanaka, for one, was uh, a Nobel Prize winner showing that you can take adult human cells and reprogram them to become pluripotent stem cells. And then in that, in that pluripotent stage, even though they had been adult cells in the past, you can then channel them to, to different types of cells. In our case, in this conversation, it's to have them build hair follicles. But people have looked at them for a number of other uses too. I mean, pancreatic islet cells, are a good number of different organs. And that's the promise of true pluripotent stem cells is that you can take adult cells, in this case, stem cells, uh, 
draw some blood. You can you can take the tissue for wherever you want, just like we took uh, the donor area for our uh, biotech cells and uh, grow new hair follicles. So that's what they're looking at doing with stem cells now is to to push pluripotent stem cells toward dermal cells and push different population towards epidermal cells and then make a construct of those two cell types that will form a new hair follicle. So what is the, not looking to the future, that'll be the next segment. I'm going to consider today and the next year or two is the, is the present. What are the, what is the immediate goal that would make you excited and, and looking forward to the next step? What, what do you guys need to achieve to prove, I guess, to be able to take the next step forward? So, you know, the next step forward is, is, uh, an exciting one. We're re restarting our process and, and handing off that uh, technology to Stemson to restart the, uh, the clinical trials that were in phase two when we when we paused the program. And there, there's a, a process to handing that off. You know, I, I like to kind of use the analogy of cooking, right? You have a cookbook, but it's great if you have Julia Childs there with you showing you exactly you know what what she meant when she wrote that in the cookbook so we are uh, we're in the process now of of transferring that actual physical technology to stemson so they can restart the cell culturing system that we had used at, at adirans in our in our in our tissue culture facility in uh, in marietta georgia our gmp cell culture facility so we need to recapitulate that and start clinical trials again it might be a naive question, but there's any, is there any cooperation between the various research groups around the world, or is everybody keeping, you know, is it, is it someone's going to get it and the others are left in the dust? So I think there's a lot of cooperation, especially at the academic level. So university-based researchers, uh, uh, you know, medical researchers that are working in the lab are, are sharing uh, their, their uh, findings so that the, the entire field advances. Uh, you had mentioned before that we just recently had the World Congress of the Hair Research Societies in Dallas. And they're, you know, a, a good number of what we had in the around 500 attendees at this meeting from 40 different countries, and everyone was there to share the work they had done and try to advance the technology of treating hair loss, of reconstituting hairs, of regenerating hairs, uh, and from basic science laboratory work where they're just looking at different genes that are that are uh, of important utility in disease and in hair loss and the hair growth to people trying to form uh, new hair follicles. And, and it was an open forum. Everyone was sharing. Uh, where you see more siloed approaches is when you go to a, uh, a biotech company where they're working on their product, you know, in their own labs. And in that case, they tend to uh, just do their own work and not not, not uh, interact a lot with the other groups. Having said that, it's not unusual, and we surely did that at, at Adirans Research, is to publish your data when you when you get a reach a point in that story where you have a nice packet of information to share. Sounds good. Sounds exciting. I, I think we've covered enough for part two. Uh, you know the, the current, and and uh, we'll see where the where the part three, which is our final conversation about this, is going to be about uh, about the future. And uh, there's some interesting pathways where that can take. I want to thank uh, you, Ken, again, for bringing us up to date. And the next part of the interview, interview we'll talk about the, what the future looks like for this hair multipl multiplication process. So look for part three of this topic on the Hair Transplant Roadshow. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, Ken. Thanks so much, Bob.